The Judith Gap Wind Energy Center in Montana, US, consists of 90 towers. Each rises 80 meters above the prairie and supports turbines powered by three 38 meter blades. The vast open spaces of Montana are like taking right out of a Wild West movie, and the AVR plays an important role. Hi, I'm Marv Kausch, Field Applications Engineer here at Atmo Corporation. And you can sure tell we're out in the middle of the fields today at this uh, wind farm in uh, Montana. And uh, I'd like to do introduce Tom Ellis. He's a uh, consultant to the wind turbine industry. Hi, Tom. Hey, Marv. Thanks for making out yeah. here today. Thanks. Welcome to Montana. Thank you. And uh, what can you tell me about these turbines? Well, this was a joint uh, uh, venture between uh, Dave Hilo, Montana Wind Works, and myself, and they needed a uh, uh, motor protection to protect the investment that we'll show you that we have upstairs in a 250 uh, kVA um, generator. Uh, we needed to uh, build a system with uh, 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 that was very fast response, and it turned out that uh, our selection was uh, uh, Atmel AVR. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's take a look inside and see where the AVR actually is inside this control box. Well, come on in. All right. Here we have the wind watcher board. The heart of it, on side this little uh, board here, you will indeed see the AVR. It's an Atmega 32, and we've got it running at 16 megahertz. And what are these, Todd? These are CTs, uh, uh, current transformers, so we monitor the current. We're monitoring all three phases of voltage, all three phases of current, and we can do calculations here that are the vectoral sum of all of those. Upstairs in every tower, there's a 250 kVA generator, which is actually just an induction motor. When the wind overhauls the motor, we have a generator. So first, the wind speed is monitored to make sure there's enough wind to make electricity. Then, the blades are pitched out gradually to catch the wind and accelerate. At about 1500 RPMs, the generator is engaged, and you can see the jolt in the control room cables when this happens. After that, all three phases of voltage and current are monitored to get a maximum output and to protect the generator. So what you're going to see is this uh, window K light will go on. Yep. And after that, we'll start pitching. There it goes. There it is. So now we're advancing. Yeah. Like it here, it's starting up. Yeah. Watch these wires up here. We're going to get pretty close. That's so cool. Man. Yeah, watch this. Twelve hundred, thirteen hundred. Watch up here. I found out that the AVR had a very wide acceptance. Uh, uh, there's a lot of knowledge about it everywhere, a lot of support. Uh, there's people, in fact, called AVR freaks. AVR freaks. In the past, this thing had quite a large control that actually had relay logic with uh, ice cube relays. And so uh, with the AVR, we were really able to can press this thing into almost a system on a little uh, brick. What was this panel behind you, by the way? This is a power factor panel where we uh, uh, control the power factor by switching capacitors in and out. 
and uh, what's very interesting about all of this, we have all the information in the AVR right now to where the next design, the AVR, is going to replace this big huge panel too. Duty Gap in 2007 experienced a capacity factor of 42% among the highest in the world. This means that the turbines actually generated 42% of their 135 megawatt rated power output over all of 2007. 50 million kilowatt hours of power sent to the Montana grid. This is the total power consumed by 33,000 American homes. Not bad for just a handful of mega 32s. Thank mm -hmm. you.